Hi guys and welcome back to my channel or if you're new hello welcome my name is Megan and we are finally doing a week of workouts video it has been a hot minute since I have put one of these up I know you guys love these so much I love filming them and I love doing them I just haven't had a consistent week of workouts in a long time so I'm really excited to finally introduce you guys to my current new split I'm on week two of this new week of workouts and I'm hoping to maintain this over four to six weeks so I'm very excited to run you guys through the new program I made for myself. If you guys have followed me on Instagram, you guys would know I've had my share of like back incidents and other things going on this year alongside tons of travel. And I feel like I just hadn't had a consistent workout split and routine. It was eating me alive that I didn't have something that was like consistent because if you guys have followed me on here for a long time, you know consistency is my thing, especially with workout programs. I usually was making like a new one every four weeks. And I was also at the beginning of 2023 making new week of workouts every month so I'm sorry they fell off I was working out in this past several month period of time I just wasn't working out to progressively overload so if you guys are a little bit new to working out progressive overload is when you're going to stick to the same movements over at least a four week period aiming to increase reps sets or weight or all of the combinations and with this if you are doing the same movements week to week ideally by the end of the program you've hit some type of peak where you have increased in your strength in your muscular endurance whatever it may be that is going to contribute to muscle growth so i'm very excited to get back into this and just to get back into something nice and consistent and be on my own case about you know getting to the gym every week and following a split for our workout split it's going to be four days and it's going to be one push day, one pull day for the upper body, then two lower body days, not really with a specific focus, but all together really focusing on full lower body growth as well as strength. In the past when I've made these videos, I have not included the warm up and I always forget and then you guys comment like, what do you do to warm up sis? So this time I filmed my warm ups for you guys. So I'm gonna pop those in now. In terms of warming up, it's important that you do, whether that's a quick walk on the treadmill as well to get heart rate up, whether you want to do more stretching than I'm doing, less stretching than I'm doing, but just making sure that you kind of create a routine and actually move your body before putting it under a lot of load is super important. I personally suffered a back injury last year, which I alluded to at the beginning. That has led me to have a full back mobility routine that I do every single day, but especially on my gym days. And then on my lower body and upper body days, I have some small movements I like to do just to kind of warm up those muscles, move those muscles. And of course, before you do your heavy things like your chest pressing, like your hip thrusting, squatting, deadlifting, always do proper warm up sets with that as well. So using just the bar, slowly making jumps to your working weight, not just going straight to your working weight is super important. But I'm just gonna cue a little voiceover of some of the stuff that I do to warm up. I don't know the proper names for every exercise I do, but hopefully this helps you guys and gives you some warm-up inspo and then we'll hop into the workout week. Here is my daily low back mobility routine. We are going to be starting with the foam roller. It's going to go right under the shoulder blades. Hands are going to go behind the head to support it as it falls. As you do this, we're going to get a nice stretch in through that mid back as well as through that chest. So obviously this is sped up. Do it nice, slow, and controlled. I usually do about 10 reps and then I roll through my upper back just to get a little bit of the knots and cracks out. Then foam roller goes to the side. My top leg is on top of it. Hands go together and these are called open books. So so eyes and hands follow that top hand. We're getting a nice twist and mobility in through that mid spine or that T spine. Here's a better view of what the setup looks like. But goal of this is just to get nice rotation through that spine, get it nice and warmed up. And it's normal to get some cracks there. I also do eight to 10 of those. Then I lay on the foam roller. I know this looks super weird. Make sure that your head is supported. Arms are going to go straight out into a T, holding that for a little bit, then coming into a W, holding that. This is going to be a nice stretch and opener for the pecs before we get into our workout. And you can also go into an I, Y, W, just getting some rotation and movement up through that chest muscle. Then we just have thread the needles here. So foam roller is gonna support that arm. We're threading through the other arm, getting some bend back rotation. You're also gonna feel a nice stretch in through that lat. Here's a side view so you can see setup. If you don't have a foam roller, you can do this without it as well. I just like the foam roller cause it glides nicely here. And that's my daily back mobility. You can also add things like cat cow cobra, 
but now for my upper body warm up that I do in conjunction with that mobility routine, we're doing different arm circles here, really aiming to get nice movement through the scaps, through the back muscles, and just work the arms in those overhead positions where we may not warm up a ton in day to day. If you don't have a band like this, you can use a pole or you can just use the air. I've seen people use their jacket, so get creative. Then I'm doing some banded pull-aparts or Ws to get a little bit of rotator cuff warmed up with external rotation. Then I'm using this band and doing some little fake rows here to prep me and lastly finishing with banded pull-aparts, working on getting those scaps together and firing that back. Then here's my lower body warm up. So for lower body, I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I did for my low back, but now we're just gonna segue into this. Here we're starting off with some ankle mobilizations. If you guys don't have a band like this, that's totally fine. You can just do this ankle rocking motion without the band. Goal is that we get some stretch and movement in through that ankle. If you have stiff ankles, you may wanna spend a little extra time with this. And then we're gonna switch sides here. The band just provides a little bit of extra pull down on the talus bone, allowing us to get a little bit more dorsiflexion here. But goal with this is kind of bringing that knee over the toe while keeping the heel flat. Everybody's mobility is going to look different. So just do the range that's comfortable for you. Then we're getting into some groin rocks here. So one leg goes straight out, the leg that's straight out, that inner thigh, you're gonna feel a stretch. Then we're just rocking butt down to heel, getting a little bit of toe flexion and ankle rotation at the end there too. So this is a nice stretch all around for adductors, for our ankles, for our hamstrings when we rotate that foot and stretch that toe. And it's just a way to kind of dynamically warm up, especially before something like a sumo deadlift. Then we're going into some half kneeling hip flexor stretch here. You can just hold at that top or you can rock in and out of it, but you should feel a stretch in through the front of the hip where my hand is here. Sorry, we're whipping through this, it is sped up. Then we're going into some hamstring and ankle mobs in this position as well. And then we're just gonna finish off with some pigeon here for some static stretching. Pigeon is awesome, it's gonna open up those hip rotators there. If you can get all the way down, go for it. If you can't, that's okay. Um, goal is just to get some movement in. If you don't like pigeon, you can also do seated figure four stretch as well. It hits the same muscle, it just is in a different position. And last but not least, we're gonna do some hip 90-90s here. Goal with these is to really open up those hip muscles and get us prepared. You can add more, like I said, to any of these exercises or these warm-ups, but this is just my typical every single time warm-up routine. Let's hop into workout number one of the week. It's going to be the push day. And for those of you guys who don't know, push is going to be your chest, shoulder, and tricep muscles. So let's get into the gym and go kill this workout. We're gonna be starting off with a flat dumbbell chest press. You guys can also perform this movement on the floor if you're more beginner and you're a little nervous being in the weight or bench section, or you can also do this movement on a bench but with an incline. Also gyms have a chest press machine. There's so many options here, so don't feel limited to this. You can have a slight low back round through here. You guys can't see that arch, but I do have a slight arch when I do these, or you can stay flat if it's more comfortable for you. Just ensure that we have three points of stability, that being our feet on the ground, our glutes on the bench, and then our upper back on the bench as well. With form, you also wanna think about punching the sky, so knuckles up as you're pressing, and then the rest is pretty straightforward in terms of chest press. Now we're gonna be moving into a tri set. Tri set is three exercises back to back, the only rest being what it takes to get set up for the next one. For the first exercise in the tri set, we're gonna be doing a standing overhead press. You guys can use a barbell or a preloaded barbell like I'm doing here. If the weights are too heavy with these, you guys can also use two different dumbbells. Goal is you wanna keep your core nice and stable while you're pressing up, thinking about punching the sky here as well, really powering this movement through your shoulders or your delt muscles, not swaying or rocking too much with the rest of your body. Then you're gonna set that down and immediately go grab some light dumbbells. We're gonna be doing some dumbbell around the world. This is an exercise that's more about isolation than the weight you are using and you wanna make sure that you're controlling the reps, thinking of almost making a ballerina hand or bringing arms in a full circle, hence the name around the world. You're really gonna feel this burn and work in through those delts as well. And then we're gonna be moving straight into another exercise, lateral raises into lateral raise partials. So using a nice challenging weight here, we're gonna be raising up to shoulder height and then coming back down, aiming to keep control, not swinging too much with the body. Once it gets too hard to get all the way to shoulder height, instead of just giving up there, we're gonna go into some partial reps. So you'll see here, we're gonna move into some halfway partial reps 
where I'm just shooting to still get some reps in, still move a little bit through the movement pattern and get to fatigue, but we're not getting all the way to the top. Now we're gonna be moving into seated chest flies here. This is what my machine looks like at my gym, but there's tons of different machine options. There's your standard gym machine that every gym should have. You can also use cables or you guys can also do this with dumbbells laying flat. I have other videos demonstrating these movements in those methods as well. Goal with this is thinking of hugging a tree, hugging a bear. Arms are gonna come all the way out, stretching nicely at that end portion, then coming all the way in and coming back out nice and slow. Goal with this is we should feel this working in that area between the armpit attaching into the chest, and you wanna keep this nice and controlled through both ways of the range of motion. Now to work our tricep muscles, we're going to be doing a single arm tricep extension here. With tricep extensions, the biggest thing is remembering that elbow stays nice and tucked to the body. As you can see, my upper arm is staying completely still. The only thing that is moving and powering the movement is when the bottom of my arm comes to full extension. If you don't love doing these single arm, you can absolutely do them with both arms in a normal rope attachment or a straight bar. And if your gym doesn't have this attachment, you can also use one of those triangle D handles as well. And now to finish this workout, we are going to be doing some banded front raises the band part is absolutely optional so you don't feel like you need to buy this or bring this with you you can just do normal front raises in the same exact form i'm doing here the band is going to add a little bit of an extra stability component for me working on maintaining that external rotation as we come up through a different range so if front raises are super easy and you want to add some challenge this is a good way to work through shoulder stability and that is it for this push day see you guys on my next workout all right, you guys, we have our first leg day of the week. This one for me is kind of well-rounded. Like I said, I don't have like a quad or glute focus anymore. It's kind of just spread out throughout the two leg days that I have. I will say this workout day is more specific to me and my training goals. So things like my sumo deadlift and the way that I set that up, things like the supersets and stuff that I'm doing, they are a little bit more catered to me and my current goals in terms of strengthening areas that are weak for me, as well as getting back into heavier lifting. So you guys can take inspiration from this and then change the reps and stuff based on what you want to do but I just wanted to say that in advance because I know I'm doing like two sets of things where you guys might be used to doing like three, four, five sets of those things. My focus on this day really is getting back into deadlifting and deadlifting a little bit heavier so we're gonna hop into that right now. To start off, we're gonna be doing sumo deadlifts. Like I mentioned, that is a focus of today's workout. First and foremost, you wanna make sure that you do some warm up sets, whatever weight you're working up to, making sure you warm up before getting into it. Here's one of my warm up sets. So I really am focusing on pulling that slack out of the bar, getting my chest up, legs bent, and then really getting to that full hip extension. This is my top set. So top set means it's going to be the heaviest weight you do for only one set of however many reps you desire. For me, I'm doing one set of three at 225 pounds here. This is actually my first time doing 225 since I had my back injury. So I'm really happy with this, but goal with your top set is that you're introducing a heavier weight, but you're not expected to maintain that for tons of load and tons of reps just to make sure your body responds well to it and you can do it with proper form. After that top set, I then cut the weight down and now I'm doing sumo deadlift eccentrics. Eccentric meaning focusing on this lowering portion of the movement, getting a nice and slow and controlled range of motion on the way down. With this, we want to make sure that our lats stay engaged, so those muscles right by my armpits there, as well as making sure that each rep, my hips are rising and everything is moving nice and controlled. Next, we're going to be moving into some lateral heel taps. These are a different addition to my routine that I'm really enjoying. The leg that is on top of the boxes is going to be the one that is working. It's working to stabilize you, so you're going to feel a lot of burn in through that glute medius muscle. And if you're doing this properly, you should be driving through that heel and really only working through the leg that is on the box. The other one is just along for the ride and you're stopping once that heel taps the ground. The height that you use for your boxes is going to be dependent on your knee flexion as well as your familiarity and your balance with this. For me, I just stand by a pole. I'd rather have a full range of motion than half reps or bad reps. So holding on is not bad if we're getting proper form. I'm not relying on the pole, but I'm just using it for some stabilization. If you're going to hold weight, I would hold it on the side of the working leg or up at the chest to get you to really focus and lean in on that working leg that is on the box. Try through that heel we're doing two sets here because i'm going to do another step up 
variation. So I called that a step down. Here we have a step up with a bit higher of a box. Again, so using that pole for stability so that we can really just focus on this full range of motion. With this, I want you guys to think about your hips coming back and stepping backwards. So as you guys can see, the leg that's not working is kind of lunging all the way back. This is going to give us a little bit more stretch on those glutes. So chest with the forward lean, leaning all the way back with that back leg. You're going to feel a lot of stretch through that glute as you push through that right leg's heel to really get you all the way up. Keep this nice and controlled load on the side of the working leg and you'll really feel the benefits of the two exercises together. Now we have a superset focused on the glutes and the hamstrings. So firstly, we're doing a B stance or single leg hip thrust here. That other leg, the left leg is just stabilizing me. I'm putting all the work and all the weight in through the right leg, specifically driving through the right heel of my foot. With this, you wanna be set up just like a normal hip thrust. If you don't have access to a bench, you can also do a glute bridge. That's totally fine. Goal is just to work and fatigue those glutes. So here, we're going up, we're doing 10 reps when we get to that 10th rep, just doing a nice hold until we can't hold it anymore, dropping and bailing the weight, then standing up and going into our single leg RDL on that same leg, really focusing on now working through that hamstring. So with RDLs, like I said, with other exercises, I'd rather you hold on for stability with these than be all over the place and not having proper form, especially for safety of our back. If you guys don't like this stuff, of RDL you're more than welcome to just do a B stance so where that leg is kickstanding but this one I think is great if you want to focus on some more core stability balance getting a little bit more stretch and just switching it up in your routine so these are awesome thinking about hinging back at the hips really allowing that torso to come down and you should feel a nice stretch into that back of the thigh we're going to be doing 10 reps on each side here and then after all this you go back in and you do the other leg and you do that two times then we're finishing this workout off with single leg leg extensions. We're doing two sets of eight here, so not super high in terms of volume or weight, but enough to where we're challenging ourselves. So since we're only doing two sets, trying to challenge the weight as much as you can while also having proper form is the goal. With single leg extensions, it's just allowing us to focus on any muscular imbalance with the quad. And we say this for the end because it's one that we don't have to load super heavy so we can focus a little bit more on isolation and working in those fatigued rep ranges. So that is it for this leg day and I'll see you guys for the next upper body day. We officially are at our second upper body day of the week. We're going to be doing a pull day. If you guys don't know what pull day is, it's going to be focused on our back and our bicep muscles. If you are a girly who wants to look nice and snatched, pull days are going to be your best friend. Really working through growing your back, specifically your lats, to make that wider shape will help the illusion of the smaller waist. So I highly recommend adding some of these exercises into your routine and let's get into it. To start off this pull day, we're gonna be doing an eccentric inverted row. I haven't done these in a long, long time and I forgot how hard they are, but how good they are, especially if you're someone looking to get into pull-ups or just strengthen that periscap or that back. So just like with the deadlifts, when I say eccentric, it means we're slowing down the lengthening portion of the movement. So here we're shortening the range, we're coming all the way up, and then we're slowing down as we lengthen coming back down. I let my butt hit the floor, I take a second to breathe, and then I get back into the next rep. Goal with this is that we just keep nice control, especially on that way down, really keeping those muscles engaged. You guys can adjust the reps and sets based on your strength. I personally can only do three sets of six, but we're working on building that week to week. Now we're going to be moving into a single arm bent over row here using a bench to stabilize. If you guys don't have a bench or don't like using a bench, you guys can use a wall, you can use a pole, or you can just do double arm and be in midair doing it. But I like to do these. I like to focus on one arm at a time because I do have some difference right to left in terms of my strength. But in terms of setup with these, you're going to have the non-working knee on the bench, the non-working arm on the bench, keeping you fully stable along with that left leg, keeping me fully stable here. Then I want you guys to thinking about rowing that dumbbell up to the hip. So coming at a bit of a diagonal, keeping the arm nice and tucked to the body. And this is really going to hit that lat muscle, especially after the inverted row. You should really feel that activate and pick a challenging weight. Then we're going to be going into a tri set just like we did on shoulder day. Now we're doing it focused on our biceps and our rear delts. So the first exercise is going to be bicep curls using just a straight bar here. If you don't like the straight bar or you prefer dumbbells, feel free to use dumbbells as well. But goal here is we are doing 10 reps of curls, getting a nice fatigue here, aiming for a pretty good weight, one that you can obviously do for three rounds of 10, but one that's still challenging by that last rep. 
Then when you're done with this, you're going to set that bar down and we're immediately going to go into an across the chest bicep curl. So we're going to do these one at a time, really focusing on one arm at a time. After you're just doing those curls, this should be very hard for you. Sometimes I can only crank out five reps, but we're going for eight. Goal is that elbow and that upper arm is staying in place. And then the only thing moving is that wrist into the armpit. And this is really going to isolate that bicep muscle in a different range of motion. As you can see, this is burning for me. Then we're going into the other side. I use my other hand sometimes to make sure that my core is stabilizing so that I'm keeping that core nice engaged and not rocking with the rest of my body. And I'm really focused on that bicep doing the work for me and kind of dragging across. Biceps is something that I don't do a ton of work with, but when I do it, I like to kind of switch it up and do different variations so I don't get bored. And then right after that, we're taking a seat and we're getting straight into bent over rear delt flies with dumbbells. With these, you want to grip nice and light dumbbells. It's a hard workout, so I don't recommend going super heavy, but gripping them with your pinkies up, so pulling straight up. You can also do this with your palms facing down if that's preferable, but goal is to get to shoulder height, making a T, come back down without shrugging the traps or rocking too much. Now we're going to be doing some lat pull downs. I'm doing them with a neutral grip just based on the grip that my gym has. You guys can do this underhand or you can do it like a normal lat pull down. I have other videos of me doing that as well. Goal here is just to be nice and controlled, pulling all the way down and controlling the weight as it comes back up. My goal with lat pull downs in this is really to be nice and strong. So that's why I'm only doing four sets of low reps. So five reps here where the last one should be a nice challenge. Thinking about really getting those lats engaged the same way you were when you were doing those inverted rows. Then after that, we're going to go into a single arm lat pull down. As you can tell, I'm really trying to work on unilateral work, so one arm at a time and making sure that we're giving that same love to both sides. If your gym does not have this machine, that's fine. You guys can use the lat pull down machine and just do single arm with a D handle, or you can do this half kneeling at the cable column as well to finish off. And that is it for this pull day slay. For our last workout of the week, we have our second leg day, which like I said, is a mixture of a bunch of things. This one does have what kind of feels sometimes like a lot of exercises. So uh, you guys can pick and choose obviously ones that you do and don't like and kind of cut down as you see fit. But let's just go and kill this leg day. We are gonna be hopping on the pit shark. I know not every gym has this, unfortunately, but that's totally okay. This, as you guys can tell, is a belt squat, so the weight is going to be coming from below us. So to replicate this, you guys can do this at your own gym, just holding a nice heavy kettlebell or dumbbell down so you have that same forward torso lean and you can perform it in the exact same way. So the only difference is the weight isn't coming from the hips, so you might not be able to load it as much, but it's the same movement pattern and body mechanic there. So for me, I'm doing four sets of five of tempo pit sharks. So tempo is going to mean slowing down and going at a specific rate for me i was shooting for a three zero zero tempo so a three second lower count one two three zero hold at the bottom and then as fast as i can or as normal as i can coming back up with this i'm doing four sets of five so not too heavy or high of volume but really trying to push myself with the weight so i've got two plates on each side focusing on that nice and slow eccentric there then we're going to be moving into some double leg dumbbell RDLs focused on keeping that core nice and stable, thinking of those hips going back towards the wall as if someone was pulling on them while the bottom of my legs look like they're stuck in something so they're not even moving at all. RDLs are a tricky movement to get down but they are absolutely awesome for glute growth, hamstring stability, and overall posterior chain. So keep working on these. Let me know if you guys want a further video or advice on them. And then we're going to be moving into some back extensions here. I'm performing these with the goal of working through some hamstring and glute, but you can also do this to bias a little bit of that low back or those spinal erectors as well. I'm holding a weight, but if you've never done this before, I would recommend just going body weight. You want to set the pads so that it is right with your hip crease so that you're able to bend over. And I like to have my toes externally rotated, a little bend in the knee, and then think about hip thrusting into the pad and you should feel your glutes squeeze and contract throughout that entire movement. Then we're going to be moving into walking lunges, which are just so criminal. These are the worst, but they're also the best. I feel like these are an awesome thing to have in my routine, and I actually prefer them over split squats, so it's fine. Goal with this is we're getting 10 reps on the way down, 10 reps on the way back, 
focusing on really driving through that front leg. So I don't want you guys to be driving through the back leg or pushing off with the back toe. When you push off with that back toe, you're just not getting the maximal amount of tension with the movement and you're likely not having a great amount of control with the movement. With these, you don't have to load them super heavy, but I really like the component of having that core stability as you're walking. And you can also get a lot more glute bias if you have a slight forward lean here. And they're an awesome one to add into the routine. Then we're moving into some eccentric hamstring curls. As you guys can tell, eccentrics are a theme in this workout block. I feel like I used to do exercises so fast and I would never control them. So a goal for me was really to start to control some exercises and just slow some stuff down and make sure that I'm strong on all portions of the lift, not just the main one where we're contracting. So with these, what we're going to do is we are going to be bringing those heels to butt. This is going to be working the hamstrings in a shortened position. So RDLs are lengthening or stretching them out. This is going to be shortening them. This is where my hamstrings are a lot weaker. So that's why I'm doing eccentrics to really help strengthen them. Going for some heavier weights here for three sets of six. And when I'm coming back down, I'm just going as slow as I possibly can, at least holding for three seconds before letting go and contracting back up. Then we're going to be finishing with some calves, the most highly neglected muscle ever in the world. We're going to be doing three rounds of this, so I like to use this machine that my gym has, but you guys can just use normal dumbbells at your side and hold them and be on a platform, or you can use a Smith machine, or a lot of gyms have different calf machines you can play around with, but I'm doing 10 double leg, nice and controlled here, really focusing on squeezing at the top, then hopping off of that and just doing five single leg body weight ones on each side. I need to kick up the single leg, but honestly, after the double leg, they are toast. And just getting a little bit more endurance in through the calves will be super important, just in overall day-to-day -day things, but also to ensure that we have them in case we want to start running, walking more. And that is it for this week of workouts. Alrighty, you guys, that is going to conclude this week of workouts video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. I really enjoyed getting back into the swing of things and taking you guys along. Please let me know if you guys have any questions. You guys can comment them down below or message me on Instagram. Always happy to take a peek at Forum if you guys ever want more support or a program catered to you. I do personalized programs, so feel free to hit me up. My coaching stuff and my Instagram and everything is down in the description. Also, the first pinned comment will be from me, and it's going to be all of the exercises and the rep ranges so that you guys can access and screenshot that as well. If you like this video, please be sure to give me a like, a comment, and subscribe. This helps me know what you guys do and don't like on my channel so I can keep making it. And I really want to make it a goal to help you guys and educate you guys in terms of fitness as much as I can this new year. I'm also doing a Gym Girlies Guide 2 series where I walk you guys through all things fitness just to help you guys learn and get more comfortable. So be sure to subscribe and I'm super excited to see you guys for my next video and happy new year. I guess when this comes out, it's gonna be the new year. So happy new year to you guys and love you so much.